Welcome everybody. In this section, we're going to be looking at how to study the Bible. This is a question that so many of so many people in this world are seeking to understand, to know God's will in their life. Today we are going to be looking at that, but before we begin, let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, as we seek to open your word, we pray for your guidance, for your direction. Please fill us with your Holy Spirit and teach us. Help us to rightly divide the words of truth and lead us in the way everlasting. We pray that we can have practical steps to increase our devotions to you and our understanding of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So for this tip, we're going to look about how to have daily devotions in the morning. If you want to understand God's word, study it daily. And the morning is the best time. There was an old adage that said, an ounce of morning is worth a pound of afternoon. There's something about that um, early morning time with God that you just get more out of it the earlier you experience it. And later on throughout the day, it's, um, it's just not the same. Let's uh, look at the noble examples of the Bereans. In Acts 17.11, we're told that these Bereans, they were more noble than those in Thessalonica and that they received the words with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures how much? Daily. Weekly? Daily. No, daily. Only at church? No, daily. Every day. This is daily, whether these things were so. So like the Bereans, what made them noble, what set them apart from those in Thessalonica is their devotions. They were diligent students. Every day, spend time with God. Don't have your devotions be a little here, sometimes here. Don't be sporadic with the Lord. If you do it daily and consistently, then over time, you will find that you're, if you learn a little bit every day, uh, then in the course of a lifetime, you will understand much, much more. We often, um, when following a secular pursuit, people become masters at their trade. They, it takes time for them to learn the skills of the mechanic, the farmer, or the merchants. But people take what is necessary and they master it. They take time to study it and they learn consistently over time. But when we open the Word of God, we feel that we want to, with our first half an hour of ever studying, we want to understand all the things of God and we get frustrated because there's some things that do not lie upon the surface. And because the truths of all of the truths of God's words are not um, surface deep, we sometimes get uh, frustrated that we don't understand it. But if we would just take one subject at a time, search it out daily and consistently every day, eventually more and more of God's Word will begin to understand. I love the promise found in Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. It says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new when? Every morning. Every morning, great is thy faith faithfulness. So, God's mercies, His compassions, they're new in the mornings. This is when God wants us to spend time with Him, and we can see our hearts will be filled with joy, beholding the loving kindness of God and seeing His mercies throughout history. Spending time in the morning will greatly help us. Not, not only that, but... Uh, Isaiah 50 and verse 4 describes another reason why it's good to spend time in the morning. Because I would say that our devotions prepare us for the day of head. It gives us the words to say. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. Now, um, notice how it, uh, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been studying God's word and, and as I'm reading and spending time with the Lord for my personal walk, then I go throughout the day and I meet someone who is going through 
the exact struggle that I had just studied this morning. And I was like, wow, you know what? I was just reading. It's like when I was in Arizona, um, I was witnessing to uh, the water man. And uh, when I came back to him, I, I gave him a steps of Christ. I came back to him again. And um, that morning I had been studying about Joseph and his influence and how God worked for him to rise in Egypt uh, because he was faithful to the Lord. And then when I go to the water man, he was, he's not like the most spiritual person. He's very interested in health. And he was reading through the steps of Christ and he was like, wow, this has been very helpful. Um, and he said, you know, I was talking to the owner about uh, Joseph. He's such an interesting character um, and how God just blessed everything that he did. And I said, you know what? I was just reading about Joseph this morning and I was able to have an intelligent conversation with him back and forth in a relevant subject because God gave me the tongue of the learned that I knew how to speak a word in season to this man who is weary, who is going through a difficult time. And it was because of the devotions in the morning that I spent with the Lord. And you'll find that as you spend time with God in the morning, he will pre that will prepare you for the day's duties and to uh, be an encouragement and give hope to the hopeless throughout the day. There is an analogy that I really appreciate. Um, and when dealing with our food, um, we eat food every day and we eat it for strength. And um, when we eat, it gives us nourishment to our body. It gives us the energy to go throughout the day. What happens if you don't eat? When you fast, don't you oh, get very hungry and faint? Get hungry, get faint, get light, lightheaded, low energy. You, you just I feel kind of drained. Well. Yeah, not, not able to focus, not able to work. All these different things are the result of um, not eating. How long, if you go long enough, what will happen? You'll die. You will die. Without eating the physical food, we, life cannot exist. It cannot be sustained. Um, so it is with the spiritual food. We see in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we have the word of God is our bread of life. It is that which sustains our spiritual life. If we fail to, if we skip our spiritual breakfast, if we skip our devotions, if we skip our spiritual food, we too will lack spiritual clarity. Deception comes in. Falsehoods come in. We will lack the energy, the cheerfulness. We will lack the spiritual strength to overcome, to do what we know is right, to speak words of hope and encouragement. God has given us the spiritual food and the analogy of our physical food so that we can know that if we fail to eat, our spiritual life will die. And an aimless life is a living death. We may be alive and moving, but dead in trespasses and sin. And that life is not worth living. So when we're able to spend time with Christ and His Word, we are able to see, as uh, John 17, 3 says, this is eternal life, that we might know Thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom Thou hast sent. So, um, I want to give you an analogy. Consider this. Um, you can see on... Um, here, there are some berries. They are some very bright, they're green leafed, just vibrant, living berries. And as long as those um, berries or those branches, they are abiding in the vine, they have life because they are connected to the source, right? But what happens when you cut off one of those branches. And when the branch is separated from the, the source of life, it begins a withering process. 
as you can see, it begins to wither away and it begins to die and decay. Here, this uh, withering process is, is um, it doesn't happen overnight. It is a slow process. It's not the moment you cut the branch, then it looks like this. It takes time. It's gradual. It is not daily we come to Christ and it's not daily we fall out. Or it, it, It's not overnight that we come to Christ. It's not overnight that we fall out of grace. It's a gradual process. So in like manner, we're told in John 15 verse 4, Jesus said, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same, bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So often we feel that we're maybe we might feel that we are too busy to spend time with God or the life's duties or we, we just have too much to do or whatever the case may be. Christ is so clear. Without me, you can do nothing. Abide in me. You cannot bear fruit. You cannot have life. You cannot have energy unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. We need Christ. We need his abiding love. We need his the strength, the nourishment that we receive from studying the Word of God. Jesus continued in the next verse. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. See the withering process? And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So we see that the alternative, once a branch is withered, it's good for nothing. What, what do they do with withered branches? They burn them. And the question of many is, how can I abide in Christ? I want to. How do I do it? Christ says, abide in me and my words abide in you. The way we abide in Christ is that we abide in his word. We spend time through studying and acquainting ourselves with the will of God. And not only are we abiding in his word, but he continues and says, ye shall ask. When we ask the Lord, when we spend time with him in prayer and we seek his will, then um, this is another way that we can abide in Christ through prayer and studying God's word. Then we can bear fruit, which is that um, winning souls. Um, we are, there is a, um, uh, we're admonished in if the book of Ephesians 5, 16 and 17, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now question, where is God's will expressed? Where is God? God? In the Word of God. So as we are learning how to study the Word, we need to abide in His Word. We need to abide in His will. The way we do that is we acquaint ourselves with the Word of God. We study what is relevant in our life. We see if I am going through an experience where I lack patience, then I need to study what God's Word says about patience. And as I behold the character of God revealed in His Word on patience, I will find verses like, Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trial of your faith worketh patience, and let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Or, as Revelation 14 says, here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. You'll find time and, pl time, and time again that God wants us to have patience and how we can have it. And we are encouraged and strengthened because that is God's will for our life. That's when the Bible is no longer a dry, dead book, but it is a living book. It is a living word, a conversation with the Lord when we're studying the subjects that are relevant. Not just reading the Bible, but studying the Bible, spending time with Him. 
many seem to be begrudge the moment spent in meditation and searching the scriptures and prayer as though the time thus occupied was lost but in reality this is how we're able to redeem the time is by using the most of what we have today and as we do this we are following the law of beholding second corinthians 3:18 says but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the lord his character are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So, as we study what's relevant, as we take a subject that when we're trying to understand God's will, we search that subject through the Word of God, like the Bereans, to see whether these things are so, with a readiness of mind, a willing to do His will, then as we behold that, we are changed. It's the law of beholding. What you focus on, you find. What you focus on seems real. What you focus on grows. And eventually, what you behold, you become changed by. So when you behold the right things, it changes you. You can't behold Christ and not be changed. You can't behold sin and not be changed. It's so essential that while we are living in this world, that we are not living of this world. And one way that we do that is abiding in Christ by prayer, Bible study, and sharing our faith with others. And a general rule of thumb, when starting the day, when starting even transitions between uh, projects throughout the day, we can remember the words of Christ in Matthew 6.33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. When we seek God first, he makes sure that everything else falls in place. We can seek God with our family. We can seek God with our work. We can seek God with our finances, with our health. We can seek God in even his own work. Whatever the case may be, when we seek God first and His righteousness, His right doing, His law, His, His will for our life, then that's when we will experience the promise that um, I have seen, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging for bread. So thank you so much. I hope that this, um, this Bible study principle has been a blessing and shed more light on your walk.